You are welcome to this video. Now this is a bit different because I'm getting so many questions on how I make these videos. So I'm going to do a video on how I make these videos. So if you've tuned in for a lesson or a video on COVID-19, my unconditional apologies, it's not about that. This is for people that have asked so many times about how, how I make these videos. And it's really an increasingly important topic uh, at the moment because so many people are trying to work from home, teach from home, and this is how I do it. So if you want to know about that, fine. If not, apologies for uh, the, uh, the false alarm. So let's look around the setup first of all. So what have we got? Well, let's start, let's start over here. Now, these are my, um, these are my lights here. So when it's a bit, it's sunny now, so I don't need them. But when it's a bit dark, I put on these extra lights. So uh, they're just a bit of extra lighting. Um, should it be required? And then up here, just so I've got even lighting everywhere, I've got an extra light hanging off the uh, off the curtain rail. Now I have experimented with different lights. Um, there's some LED ones I've put together, but um, I find this works quite well. So I've got that overhead one there, and these two on the side. Now one of the key things is to get even lighting on all sides so that you haven't got one side of your face in the sun and you've got one side of your face in the darkness. So um, it's not really working now because the sun's out, but so I've got one extra light here. So this is kind of a dedicated light and I've just put this on the on the bench as you can see. And this is on a just, a, this is just a standard camera mount tripod. That was about 20 pounds I think for that. The light was probably around about 25 25 pounds for dollars just add about a third something like that so um so about maybe 20 25 pounds for the stand about the same again for the light these lights here are just normal domestic lights now the cameras um, i started off with this one this is kind of the standard this one's a logitech camera i think these are about 50 60 70 pounds now it's a good quality uh little camera really and what happened was I fiddled on for ages trying to fix it on with clothes pegs and all sorts of things. And then I got one of these swan necks from uh, the ready available online. I think it was about 20 pounds. It was surprisingly cheap. So the camera connects up to that. And then this swan neck just goes onto the bench there like that. Hooks onto the bench. So you can just angle the position of this camera and get it wherever you want in space. So that's the first camera. Then I added this second camera. Now this second camera is just a standard um, HD camera. It's not 4K or anything like that. Just a standard, standard video camera, really. Um, now these standard HD video cameras, they used to be um, quite expensive, but they're relatively cheap now because everyone seems to want 4K. And I don't really see the advantage of going to 4K at the moment. So. Um, I think they're around about £300 now, so you can actually get really good deals on those. So I've had that one for a while. I'm using that as the second camera. And this overhead one here, I've just bought this one recently, just upgraded this one. Again, it's just a standard, um, standard video camera. I think that was about £300, something like that. But it's a good quality one, it's not a cheap one, but it's not, it's not a 4K, it's not anything, anything fancy. I think it's what you would call a prosumer range. It's kind of not quite consumer, not quite professional. It's kind of okay. And we can see that on that one, you've got the screen to show you what you're doing. And you've got, you've got, you've got your screen on that one that shows you what you're doing as well. But this one, when I'm having that, if that screen's on there, I find that a bit distracting. So um, that's just me, of course, but I tend to turn that one away when I'm filming like that. So they're the three cameras. Obviously, this was this one's just on an impromptu, uh, tri just a basic tripod as well. This is just a standard uh, uh, retort stand. You can get these online reasonably inexpensive. I think they're about 20, 30 pounds, something like that. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why has he got a hammer on the bench? The reason I've got a hammer on the bench is it just gives that... <laughs> It's just a heavy camera and it stops it stops this stand from tippling. So it, give, it gives that a bit of stability to that stand. It just makes that base plate 
heavier. So that works quite well. Microphone, um, this is a USB microphone. The microphone makes a huge difference actually. Um, it's worth spending a bit of money on a microphone. I don't know how much these ones are now, but you know, a USB microphone did different, I mean, all the brands work much the same. You know, but it's, it's a USB microphone. You don't have to use a USB microphone, but that's the one I use and it works fairly well. And the key is to get the microphone fairly close to where you're, to where you're speaking um, as well. So um, that's that. Now, how do the cameras connect up to the uh, computer is the next thing. Well, th this all comes from the HDMI out of the camera. So that is the HDMI out, that lead there, HDMI out. And that actually connects up to this thing here. Now, I don't really know what this is, um, but it connects up to this. It's, it's called an HDMI video capture. And again, um, relatively inexpensive. I think, I think that was about £20, something like that. And that connects up to that, and that just goes into, uh, that just goes into a USB port into the computer. So that goes into a USB port in the computer from that. Now this here, um, it's a fairly low capacity thing, but this is running on um, HD, uh, full, full, full HD, um, 1920 by 1080, full HD, at 30 frames per second, and this handles it perfectly well. Uh, now this camera here, this overhead camera, this again, HDMI out there, and that is going into, uh, this is a more sophisticated little box here. This is called the uh, the Elgato device. And, and um, this was actually quite expensive. And what this does is it takes the, this is the HDMI out from the uh, camera. And that there goes into a USB uh, port on the computer. So again, this does something clever with the, um, turn it right around so you can see it. This does something clever with the picture from the camera and puts it into a, a format that it can go into the computer. So basically this box here, this Elgato device, as I call it, I think that's just the name of the manufacturer, has got the HDMI in from the camera, from the HDMI out from the camera, then the out from this Elgato device is there, and that just goes into a, a USB port on the computer. So this is the connection to the uh, the webcam, the, the Logitech, that just goes straight in. Now, for some reason, I don't understand. The the um, the Logitech doesn't need one of those Elgato uh, video capture devices. It just plugs in straight away. So so that that, that plugs in straight away there. That'll be one from uh, from one camera, and that'll be the one from the from the other camera. If you're running at more than thirty frames per second, you need a USB three connection. So there the USB connections in, the microphone just goes into a USB connection at the back of the, at the, back of the computer, just in the, in the normal way, that just goes in the back there somewhere. Now um, the computer, again, just an absolutely standard piece of kit, uh, and this is the whole point of this system, you don't need to spend a lot of money on professional equipment, um, this is all just basic off-the-shelf kit really. Now the the computer, um, it's a fairly modern computer, it's got it's got some um, RAM in it, um, random access memory, um, I think it's got eight, eight doodars, is it eight gigs I think? The reason I don't know all this is my son does all the technical stuff. All I know is how to work it, <laughs> but I know it works and I know the results are good. So I think it's got eight gigs of RAM, but it has got a, a pretty fancy graphics card. That's the key. It's got quite an expensive graphics card plugged into it. So um, it's actually a graphics card that's designed for gaming. So it works on pretty high speed, high speed um, inputs. So it's the, that, that's the graphics card. So that, that is processing the video live time. This is the key thing. It's live time. So all those inputs are going into the computer, those physical inputs into the computer. And I've got the light, so that's roughly the view from my second camera there, isn't it? Um, that's the view from my overhead camera uh, there, kind of there. And that's the view from my Logitech uh, camera there. Now, um, 
the key thing that all this system works on um, is, um, if I've got it here, yeah, the key thing that it all works on is called OBS, OBS Studio. Now, OBS Studio is a completely free software and uh, it just does basically everything you want it to do. So at the moment, I don't know if you can how you can see this, but that, there we're looking at the screen. Now what I have now is, what I'm looking at there, it's now clicked on second screen. So I've got that second screen there. And you'll sometimes see me peering around the camera trying to work out what the graph says. <laughs> that's because all this clutter's in the way. Um, all this clutter's in the way. So um, that's the second screen there. So the second screen plays, um, graphics uh, plays videos and things like that and all those all those graphs that are put on there and there's Liz's lovely uh, vitamin D one on there now whatever is on this screen here on OBS that's what record that's what record is recorded so you can have it on you can have it on full screen like that I'll just put this right off maybe you can have it on full screen like that so part screen like that or you can have it on full screen like that and then when I get, you'll, you see that sometimes when I'm making the videos, I get confused as I click the wrong thing. So if you click there, that's the view from the uh, webcam. So we're now looking at the whole thing through that camera there. So that one's showing now. And if I click again, uh, that's just the overhead camera. And you can talk about your lesson and do your lesson there. And the big thing I like about this is you can get your pen out and you can squiggle on it, you can draw your diagrams, and that's all videoed in live time, and that goes into there. And I know that's being recorded because I can see it on there. What is on the OBS is what's getting recorded. And you can see that I've also got the uh, the microphone there because I'm getting the sound bars. That's not how you're listening to it. At the moment, you're listening to this little um, GoPro camera I'm using. That's why the sound's probably not so good, but that's where the sound is normally, so you can see that the sound's working. Um, so that's uh, yeah. So that that's the yeah. Th th that's the Logitech. Uh, that's the overhead camera. Oh, and that's the combination of the overhead camera and the Logitech. Now this bit here, um, it looks a bit clever, but it's actually not. OBS Studio is doing it all. No idea how it does it. Completely beyond me, but it's doing that. And you can actually change the sizes as well. So if I want a bigger or a smaller me, I can uh, I can have a bigger or a smaller me, or you can mess around with it somehow or other. Is it that one? Anyway, you can. Um, so I can change the size of me there, or I can fiddle with that. Right, so that's that. Now the next setting down is second camera. So what we're looking at now is coming from this camera here. We're now looking through the eyes of that camera or through the eye of that camera. And that's what we're now seeing on the screen. And remember what is on there, what is on the screen is what is being recorded. Then that second screen there, that's clicking to second screen. And then I've got another option that says second screen with me in the corner. And that's second screen with me in the corner uh, there like that. So what it means is that you can like go from there and the key thing is to remember to talk into the right camera. So which one's that? That's, um, is that that? That's that. You get confused with the cameras. What one's that? That's, uh, yeah, that's that one. So the key thing is to remember and talk into the right camera. So I'm talking, you, you need to look at the camera now. So I'm looking at that camera now. It, it helps if you look at the camera, then the, the person that you're talking to feels like it's a direct conversation between just the two of us, which of course it is. Uh, that's the second camera option there. And again, you've got to remember to look into the camera. So that's the second camera there that I'm recording through now. So once you get the hang of clicking these things, it's all very quite simple, really. Um, that, that, that's basically it. It's clicking through those options and you can set those up on, on USB Studio. And then you just use the stop and start recording there like that. And then what you actually end up with is all the files the recorded files go show recordings and, and, and there they are. So um, that's the recording I've just made today. And you can just drag those onto your uh, drag those onto your desktop. And there you have it. It's a single file. 
uh, OBS does it all in 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 uh, in live time. Um, it's quite impressive, really. So um, that's it. Completely free software. Um, I think the reason OBS do it is because they sell devices and things that go with it, perhaps the Elgato, I'm, I'm not sure. So it looks a bit complicated. Overhead camera, lights, uh, second camera, Logitech camera, microphone, uh, extra light up there, all crunched through the computer and the graphics card. But uh, the reason I can do it as a non-technical man is because I can see it all on this OBS studio as I'm doing it. Um, so that is basically it. That is how I make these uh, videos. I've tried different ways of making videos. I mean, I actually quite like making videos where I'm actually, uh, you know, in a classroom. Um, you know, because I mean, I've taught in classrooms for 27 years, so it's kind of my natural stomping ground. And there's a lot of videos on my channel I've made like that, but for daily update videos at home, I find this gives a feel of, um, well, first of all, it's easy, it's easy enough to do. Um, it does depend on the conditions outside, of course, if the neighbours are cutting the grass or something, or if there's noisy things going on. Light aircraft are one of the really annoying things, but we've had a quiet spell so far on this, on this particular video. Um, yeah. And no, no, normally it works, it works fairly well. I do try and do them just as one take, um, because if you've got to load it onto an editor, I, I, I'm using Adobe Elements, Adobe, Adobe Premiere Elements. I think that software is around about the £100 mark, about £90 mark. But you keep it forever, you don't have to keep updating it like you do with Adobe Professional Suite. So once you've bought the software, that's it, you've got it. But it takes ages, because the videos are sort of fast, it takes ages to load them on, and it takes ages to crunch it. And for some reason, after you have um, made a video and edited a video on Adobe uh, Elements, uh, Adobe, Adobe Premiere Elements, the file's about three times as big, and it takes ages to upload, like, like a couple hours to upload. So I try not to edit it. I just try and go straight through and do it in one take. And even though that's kind of not swish, it's kind of... You know, it's not, it's not a highly polished product, but it's just sort of um, more more genuine somehow, I think. Um, and you get more of that feeling, you know, that of, of direct uh, di direct communication, which, of course, is what this is all about. Uh, that's, that's what it is. So there you go. Um, and, of course, once you've recorded a lesson, if you look on my Campbell Teaching um, archive, um, basically I recorded videos on all the lessons that... Um, I tried to work out what do all the student nurses and medical students in the world need. So I did all the basic physiology, all the basic pathophysiology. And OK, things change a bit. But most of those, you know, 99% of those videos are still fine. Once you've got it, it's kind of in the can there. So you've got to kind of wonder what universities are for these days, really. Um, you know, you, you could try it a few times. You get your Nobel Prize winning lesson and then you keep it. You just You just keep using the same one. You can also uh, put bits and bobs on, you know. I mean, I mean, one one thing that's great with the the COVID nineteen work I've been doing is um, so much interaction, so many comments. I, I wish I had time to read them all and go through them all, but um, you know, you, you you have this interaction which is is really is really quite nice. So so that's it really. That's what we do. This is the poster I got for Mag Unity. So I've just kind of put that in the background as a. I suppose a bit of a prop, really, but, you know, you, you can never get the basic messages too much. And then, um, obviously, the room doesn't normally look like this um, because I've, I've obviously tidied it up uh, <laughs> to make this video. Um, <laughs> normally, it's a complete mess, um, but, uh, but there you go. And then, of course, we've got... Um, We've got the YouTube thing for 100,000 views. We've got the Phrenology Globe that shows people can talk a load of rubbish. And we've got Winston, the black dog of depression, showing that people are holistic. <laughs> Actually, it's just stuff that was left there when I came to sort the videos out. Now, I'm remarkably fortunate here. I've got neighbours on this side and on the other side, but, but I'm remarkably fortunate that I've got these woods. Um, those woods are out the back, so... It does make things normally fairly quiet. Um, if you're recording 
um, for, for, for teaching purposes. Um, actually, getting quiet is, is often the most challenging thing. I've had 20 minutes now on this video and it's all been really quiet and that's that is somewhat unusual so you know you can be you can you can be sort of 28 minutes into a half hour video and then you know a light aircraft flies over or the next door neighbor starts cutting the grass or dogs start barking or, or whatever you know you've just got to try and try and go through it really with a good microphone actually it, it, it filters out a lot of the external sound if you use um I can't remember what it's called now, but like a directional mode on, on the microphone, you can actually get rid of some of that. The big thing is it distracts you and you forget what you're saying. Um, but anyway, there, there we are. That's um, that's the setup. Hope that helps. Um, I'll post the technical details I have in the description. So if you want to start making educational videos, as I say, especially for teachers and uh, lecturers, um, that's the way I do it. So, I mean, total cost-wise, what are we looking at? Three, six, nine, ten. Probably about a thousand pounds of equipment, plus plus the computer and the screens. But most people have got a computer and screens already. So, you know, you can actually set up. Okay, it's a fair chunk of money, but um, you don't need. You don't just. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a bit silly. Really. You don't need three cameras. You can do it with one camera. So you do it with two. Um, yeah, so you know you can do it for. You might need to save up for a few weeks, but you know it's you, it's basically basically affordable. Or if you work for an institution, they might pay for you, which of course would be would be rather nice. I'm independent these days, so I don't get that. But um, yeah, yeah. So around about a thousand pounds plus your computer, and you can set up and, and make really surprisingly good quality videos. Um, okay, no, that's that's it. Okay, thank you for watching. If that helps, uh, do let me know. Always good to know if the message is getting through, if we're communicating. And uh, we'll post the technical details below. Okay, thank you.